How's it going everybody? Jesse here with Redefine FX and today I'll show you how to emit smoke and fire out of your animated character. Let's jump right into it. All right, so first you need a character. You can download it from Mixamo. Mixamo characters will work with this technique as well. Or you can just go to characters, mannequins, animations. Let's pick Manny and do MM walk forward. Make sure that he's in the origin of your scene. So X, Y, and Z should be set to zero. And just make sure that the skeletal mesh matches the character. So here it should say Manny instead of Quinn. So SKM Manny simple. And then you can just right click Niagara system. Let's make a new system from template this time and pick the grid 3D gas simple particle source. Rename it as NS underscore character fire. We can delete these comments here. And we can also turn off shape location, add velocity, curl noise force, and scale sprite size. Right, so if you'd like to learn how to set up these simulations completely from scratch, I have tutorials for that on my channel. Here, I just wanna show you the character part. So under particle spawn, you can search for reproduction, and we want the initialized mesh reproduction sprite. And our skeletal mesh is called SKM Manny Simple. So here I'll search for SKM, Manny, simple. And then under particle update, I again want to search for reproduction and I want the update mesh reproduction sprite. And again, search for SKM, Manny, simple. And if you turn on your sprite renderer, you can see that your character is already being formed by the particles. So the way this works, under particle spawn, the particles are being told to be born on top of the character. On the particle update, they're being told to stay attached to the character over the course of their lifetime. That's why we added this reproduction sprite in these two groups. So we can turn off the sprite renderer. And right now what's happening under set fluid source attributes, the radius of the particles is too small. So we can just revert this back to default and set it to around eight. And now you can see our character is on fire. So now we can just move him down. So emitter summary, let's do 0.5 on the Z. So he's sitting on the ground. And at this point we can test that everything is working in our scene. So just drag your Niagara system into the scene. Make sure that it's at the origin. So again, X, Y, Z should be set to zero and they should be lining up right now. So now just grab the Niagara system in your outliner and drag it on top of your character skeletal mesh, which is the MM walk forward and click on none. This way they're linked together. And now when you select simulate and start the simulation, you can see that they're perfectly attached and it's already working, right? So this is basically the setup. You can just improve how the simulation looks from here. So we can extend our grid on the Y axis. I'll just do 1000. So inside of the templates, there are some user parameters set, meaning you just control those settings from down here. So we can give it maybe a thousand on the Y axis, 400 on the X. And let's just move the character more to this wall. So I'll just move him on the Y axis, maybe minus 0.3. Let's increase the resolution of the simulation. So you can set that to 400. And under simulation, I don't want the fire to be rising up like this. We could just go under forces and enable wind. We want the wind to be on the Y axis and give it a magnitude of maybe 50 or actually it should be minus one on the Y, right? So now it's being pushed back and we can also just give it the gravity on the Y axis. So gravity on Z zero and gravity on Y, we can do a thousand. So now if I go back to my scene and I start the simulation, we are almost there. Maybe the fire is just a touch too bright. So for that, you can just lower the temperature amount here to maybe 0.25. If you want less smoke, you can decrease the density to 0.4. And if you want the character to give less speed to the smoke and disturb it less, you can also de decrease the velocity scale to 0.5. Also, don't forget to hide the bounce. So uncheck draw bounce. And of course, I just added some lights and some rocks from Quixel to make the scene a bit more interesting. I will leave it up to you to play around with this. If you'd like to learn how to set up simulations like this completely from scratch, I recently released a completely free 
Niagara Fluids Crash Course, where we set up all of these effects that you're seeing completely from scratch. I go over all of the settings in a lot more detail. It's completely free and you can still get it at redefineffects.com slash blast. So make sure you grab it. It's not going to be around forever. And with that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.